uh, electrification is certainly lowering the bar for you know what a vehicle needs uh, you know to to become you know a consumer product in this country, um, and there's companies coming out of the woodwork looking to do that because it's it's certainly easier than the uh, internal combustion engine, the moving parts, and everything else. If they can make them cheaper, um, you know, and consumers are going to buy them, more people are going to start up and start making them, and that's certainly what's happening. Is and as it does happen, it's going to be harder and harder to keep track and, and, um, and to have a lot of information contained in the VIN do that ef effectively. And, you know, there's, um, God, there's almost 300 million vehicles on the road just in this country alone. So, you know, there, and there's only so much information that's contained in this string. It's 17 alphanumeric characters. They punt out a number of them because they look like numbers and, you know, you got to be careful because um, you don't want to confuse people between an I and a one, right? right? Or a zero and an O. And then, you know, you, you have very basic things that are actually contained in this VIN. Um, and it doesn't actually typically get you um, to identify what the car really is. And I'll explain. So you have this, you have this huge, right? Alphanumeric number you'd think a ton of information in this is encoded in that, but really it boils down to the important stuff that can be gotten out of the car um, is typically year, make, model, and engine. And that's about it. You know, um, there's other things that like where the plant, the restraint system, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the vehicle weight range, those things are, are less important um, at least to most people. Um, and, it, and it's just surprising that when you decode a VIN that you can't actually get to the trim level of a vehicle um, except for maybe a third of the time. And it often takes additional information beyond just the VIN number to pro that's right, to properly identify the trim or style level of a vehicle. Um, that's one thing that, you know, certainly we recognize as a challenge early on. Um, we've obtained um, OEM records and other industry records um, and applied other types of logic to be able to get right to the trim level for a growing number of vehicles, including Fords, Toyotas, you know, these trucks, um, and even uh, like, you know, vehicles like Honda, which, um, you know, they don't have optional equipment, but they have a massive number of styles, which are permutations of possible equipment. And, you know, so to identify a vehicle all the way to the trim style level from a VIN um, is, uh, you can't, just can't do that in more than about a third of the cases. Um, and, and that's certainly what standard VIN decoders can do. You can get, uh, you know, you can use NHTSA's VIN decoder. Um, there are other free de VIN decoders out there. And, and really what they're doing is um, utilizing the basic principles of decoding the VIN to get you that very basic information. But that's not going to help solve a lot of problems when you need to identify the vehicle on a much more granular and precise level. Um, you need to know the dimensions of that car and the difference between a vehicle trim could, you know, extend the length of the car. It could dramatically increase the weight. Um, certainly the, all the equipment on the car um, there's just a, there's a ton of information that doesn't get unlocked until you get to that style level. And, uh, it, it is really kind of an art to now, uh, and a science to decode the VIN past the trim level, what a standard VIN decoder can do and get you all the way to the trim level and unlock a ton of things that previously, um, were not obtainable by just the VIN. And it's really those extended data sets in combination with an intelligent VIN decoder then ha can help do that and automate a lot of things that um, otherwise would require uh, visual inspection or um, some manual intervention to, uh, to put two multiple things together to get a true picture of what the car is, what's on it, and what you need to know about it in order to do um, a specific task, um, depending on where you are in the industry and what you're trying to accomplish. Going beyond the VIN is important because, you know, there are, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the start of what's needed for so many things. I mean, today, 
Um, you know, if you you can't sell it, um, you can't insure it, finance it, ship it, and until you identify it, because there's so many things that just need to happen from identifying the vehicles. Um, the VIN number is the best thing that we have to work with. And, you know, there are limitations and there are some things you can get out of it. So that's definitely something that was worth exploring and something that um, a, as we uh, began talking in the various shows where we met, began to understand the, um, the synergies between your audience and, and things that they're working on and things that we're working on. And then even um, I had checked out one of your previous videos and you were talking about the top uh, um, the boards and everything. and. Yeah started looking up the clients and realized, wow, you know, we're servicing a ton of this industry. There's really got to be uh, something here uh, for uh, both ways. So for us to, uh, to educate the community about, uh, you know, what we can do to help solve build business challenges in the sector. And certainly for us to learn about those challenges and see if there are other things that we can invest in, in overcoming some of those things maybe we cannot today. Um, but certainly there are some basic things um, that we're doing for a lot of companies and we can talk about some of those. Um, and it's, it's, it's an exciting topic for me and I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, that you've got an audience here that, um, you know, wants to explore this and I, I really appreciate you having me on today.